Hi everybody, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. And as I promised a number of times, um, here is the astrology, numerology, and Kambala of March uh, 2020. Now I'm going to do this in um, little sort of separate parts because there's so much going on. So we'll talk about one thing at a time. So as always, when we start um, the month, uh, we look for the monthly vibration. What's the sort of overall monthly vibration? And we get that by adding the month, the number of the month, which in this case, it's March and it's a three. Now, this is um, sort of a, a great way to sort of play with the energy, especially for those of you who like to follow me, uh, like to follow my, my uh, uh, tarot readings. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the cards associated with the two numbers that make up um, the vibration of this month. And so we have the three. This is the uh, vibration for March. Um, and I want to say a couple of things about this because I think it's important. Um, three or the Empress card on the Tree of Life is located right here. Okay. Uh, it's just about, it's not exactly the top, but it is the second tier down. Um and it's along this line here. And so this vibration, okay, will sit right there. This is the path of creative imagination, okay? We have two things that we can utilize. We can utilize our intelligence, right, which is, is sort of the mental, um, our curiosity, the, the energy of going out and seeking um uh, seeking information, right? To get, to get, to get that information, to, to find out what the story is, to figure things out, right? And then we have another um, ability, which is our intuition or our creative imagination. And it is our creative imagination that we often say, is that just my imagination? But one thing we have to realize is that our imagination creates everything around us. It is the co-creative capacity that we all each have, whether uh, we know it or not. It still works, actually. Um, and so if you think about fear and you think about the terrible things that could possibly happen, um, you actually create that reality. Now, this is not to say that you, you don't pay attention to what's going on and you live in your own little bubble. Uh, most people can't do that. Some people can. And, uh, and that's great for them, but most people have to interact with the public. And so it's more about sort of when you find yourself, you know, thinking in that realm, you want to imagine something different, imagine the alternative. So you want to picture in your mind what it is that you want to see. So as we approach, um, as we approach March here in the world, <laughs> on the earth, uh, one of the biggest stories is this coronavirus. And while it's very important to be aware of what's going on and take the precautions that you need to take, it is not to your benefit to get caught up in the fear of it. And so when you find yourself getting caught up in the fear, you can, you can switch and you can turn and you can picture yourself healed. You can picture your community safe. You can picture those people all over the world that are afraid and suffering. You can picture them well in your mind's eye. That's this path right here. And because it March, the majority of March has the sun in Pisces, which is very much cre a creative force and very much imaginative. It is the most imaginative. For those of us who have Pisces in our chart, know that we can create these phasm phasmagorical, <laughs> I don't think I said that word right. Um, this these 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 other worlds in in our mind's eye and they're as real really as the as the world in front of us we can utilize that ability that imagination and then aries has its own ability to uh to go after and see something see the potential in things so this month of march is very much um I liken it to uh Caridwin, who is a, a welsh goddess welsh welsh celtic goddess who sits there um, and sort of stirs her pot. And in her pot, she puts all these magical potions and herbs and different things. And within the pot, she looks, it's like the universe. 
And there's this energy of stirring it up and, and putting energy into the creative force with intention. So there's the pot, right? Which is the Pisces, you know, the, 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 the contents of the pot and the intention is Aries, right? And so this is the energy of, of, of uh, March. And this card is connected to that. And then we have the universal year. And the universal year is a four, right? 2020 is a four. And this is the emperor card. So in, in, in March, we have the emperor and the empress. We have the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Okay, so that's, that's very, uh, it's very exciting. It's a very creative pair. So there's a lot of creativity uh, just at our fingertips. And certainly to be able to utilize our minds. Okay. So no matter what's going on in the outside world, know that you yourself have the power to change things simply through your intention and then your actions beyond that intention. If you intend to live in a more peaceful world, then you need to take actions so that your world is more peaceful. Now, it very well may be that you're not going to be able to go out and do, you know, anti-war stuff and you don't, but how in your life, in your personal life, your day to day, can you find more peace? And that's just an example. If it's if it's resources that you're looking at, everybody, even those who have very very little, have a lot. Especially here in America or in the in the first world countries, um, where we may feel like we don't have a lot, we have a lot. And if you can look around and see how best to utilize what you already have, and sometimes it, for some people. It's just their grit and determination, but that's enough because that's what you have. Okay. So we have these two vibrations and when you add them together, of course you get a seven and this is the card for the month. Okay. The chariot card. So there's a couple of things that comes up with the chariot card. First of all, the chariot card is associated with the sign of cancer. And if you, uh, if you, you probably do know <laughs> and remember that the North node of the moon is in cancer at this time, and it will be until I think it changes in May, it changes in May. And then the North node of the moon goes into Gemini, but right now it's still in cancer and the South node is still in Capricorn. And so it's still about moving in the direction of our feelings. It's still moving in the direction of self-care and care of others, nurturance, uh, uh, valuing our feelings, valuing the feminine. What have we seen so far this year when it comes to valuing the feminine? Well, it's a big deal. Um, Harvey Weinstein was found guilty on two counts, two of four, I think it was. And that's just one, um, that's just, that's just one district that was in New York. He's also, uh, being, uh, charged in, uh, in California. Okay. So that's just one of, of perhaps many of those, but it was really that and probably the, the, the Bill Cosby, um, trial a couple of years ago where the women were finally starting to be, to be, um, to be believed. Okay. And so we can see that, that that divine feminine is here and now and working. And um, we can see women taking hold of their power and utilizing their resources and resourcefulness. Women for centuries or millennium haven't had as much as, um, as men, right? But they... They always seem to be very resourceful. Part of that resourcefulness, I think, in the energy of, of the feminine is the fact that they connect with other feminine or with other women, or they connect the community. And so it's more of a group consciousness to a certain extent, or it has had to be, but it's sort of like, um, um, like a private group, <laughs> right? So as we develop our masculine and feminine within us, as uh, people, uh, children being born more and more have this balance of masculine and feminine, it'll be less of a sort of a clicky thing and it'll be more of a, like a conscious thing. So we have that cancer energy. Now uh, this, I like the Rider weight. I mean, this one is beautiful, so don't get me wrong. 
but I do love the Rider Waite um, deck the most. And I have it right here. It's in black and white, but I just want to, um, I just want to point out just a few and let me see if I can do this right. Oh, I was, I was going to do it the other way. I wanted to, anyway, it doesn't matter. So we have here the seven chord. Okay. And this is the right or weight, um, one. And we see that we have a, um, a, a person here and they're in armor. But the interesting thing about this, um, this particular chariot card is that he's not holding the reins. He's not directing. Okay. He's not directing <laughs> because the, because the, ch the chariot card is symbolic of the soul's journey into incarnation. Okay. We all come through the sign of cancer. We all come through our mothers. Right. Um, and so it's, it's, it's sort of a journey that's a pre- predestined the direction you're going to go in is predestined what's not predestined is the choices that you make along the way and when and you'll come to choice points within your in the, in the journey of your soul through this particular lifetime where you're going to choose one thing or another and then things shift and change and you get to go down that path but it's still this energy of I am incarnating in this lifetime and so in Ma in March you may want to ask yourself why am I here what is my purpose? What is my purpose in the grand scheme of things? Am I in alignment with my soul? Am I in alignment with those things that I came to do? Okay. And now it's time to get on the road. So there's this energy of sort of moving forward. And I know that we keep talking about waves, uh, this progressive wave. First we had the blue wave. Now we have the progressive wave. Those things are real. They are movements. And, uh, you know, everybody knows that I'm a giant Bernie fan. I have him right here with me at all times. <laughs> but he's right. It isn't him. It's us. We are the change. We are the, 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 the we are the winds of change. We are the tide that's shifting. And uh, we need to come to this party with all our abilities, all our talents, all our reason and logic, and all our powers of imagination. Okay. So we also have the two sphinxes here. Okay. And they're not actually going anywhere either. <laughs> they're just sitting there. Now this one and many of the other decks, the, there's, uh, let's see, what do we have here? We have uh, two, looks like horse. I'm sorry, I can't see this. Oh my goodness. Isn't that awful that you have to take your glasses off to see stuff when you get old? <laughs> um, the two horses, one's black and one's white. Um, and that black and white theme we see in other cards. We see it in the High Priestess card. Um, uh, I think that's the one that you see it in. I think the other... Uh, so you see it in the high priestess and you see it in, um, um, the chariot. The other place where you see, uh, pillars is the Hierophant card, but those pillars are gray. So that it's not separate black and white. Okay. So you see that separate black and white energy or depiction with this particular card. Uh, and with the high priestess. And what's interesting is the high priestess sits right here on the tree of life, right in the center, connecting your crown or kether to your heart, Tipareth. And this particular uh, card, which has the white and the black as well, uh, is the path between Bina, which is the Sephiroth uh, of understanding, and Gabura, which is this, the... Um, the Sephiroth of Severity. It's also, uh, this up here is considered the supernal triangle. And, um, and so this is unity, divine masculine, divine feminine. And then there's something called the abyss. And both of these, these paths cross that abyss, as does the uh, Hierophant. Okay, the Hierophant, but the, but the, um, in the cards, the pillars are gray and not black and white. So there's a blending in the Hierophant that you don't see, uh, in this, in this, um, in this card and in the, uh, 
I, that's a little more card information than probably you need, but I just go where my mind takes me. All right. So, so this is our opportunity, this energy in this month to access our own divine masculine nature, our own divine feminine nature, and to take the path of the soul. Uh, in this card, we also see that he has little moons on his shoulders, symbolic of the idea that uh, that this is cancer, cancer the crab ruled by the moon. Okay, uh, he has a uh, hoopa. Is that what they call it? A hoopa <laughs> uh, above his head with all these stars on it. You know, it's like the the the, uh, the it's like the universe behind him, right? And um, not in this deck, but I think it's in the Toth deck, uh, on his breastplate. He has a square on his breastplate here. Square symbolizes, uh, manifested reality. The, the four is, is, is the salt of the earth, right? It's, it's construction, it's manifestation. And so, uh, he has that on, on his chest, but in the Toth deck, which unfortunately I don't have a picture of, um, there's actually a wheel. And it's the energy of the soul, sort of like a chakra wheel, right? So the soul comes into the personality, into the body, uh, into the ego in order to uh, express its its specific uh, purpose. So these are all the kind of things that we have an opportunity to connect to in March. Of course, we have opportunities to connect to this all the time. It's just that in March, it's especially potent. And with the astrology that's happening in March, you'll see that it's not only potent and there, but necessary to utilize. Okay. So, um, the other thing I want to show you is, uh, this path, as I already spoke, um, and you can separate out the tree of life into three pillars. This is the pillar of mercy, uh, or the masculine pillar. This is the pillar, the middle pillar or the pillar of transformation that has the energy of, um, um, where the masculine and feminine are uh, equal. Androgyny, sorry. So there's androgyny here. And then we have the p pillar of severity, which is associated with uh, the feminine. This is the pillar of the past. This is the pillar of the present. And this is the pillar of the future. And so an eye to the future, okay? I know that, you know, many metaphysical people say, you're in the, all your powers in the present moment. What you do in this moment is good. And that is true. But today or this month, we're required to stay in the moment because that's important. We have, because we have no power, but in the present moment with an eye to the future, with a vision for the future. Okay. Either with a vision for the future or with an ability to open up to our own souls and let our souls unfold our future before us and let our heart and our feelings, cancer, uh, move us in the direction. If it feels good, uh, this is an example I want to use. And of course, you guys might get tired of me using Bernie Sanders examples, but it's sort of my wheelhouse. And I think they're, I think they, they really work well. Um, Bernie Sanders, his hit at the root of his, um, his campaign and his movement is taking care of one another. It's love and compassion. And how many of us would just love to go into that, like that, that world of love and compassion. We all, I mean, the, unless you're severely wounded and feel like you don't deserve love and compassion, you will push that away. But, but, well, I think most of my watchers here or subscribers want to go in that direction, that direction of peace and love and compassion and taking care of one another. And they tell us that we can't do it, that it's, it's too pie in the sky. That's not the way the world works. Blah, 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 blah. Well, we get to decide how the world works because we co-create it. And so it's important to go with your heart. If, if Bernie Sanders message makes you feel good in your heart, you go with that. If Joe Biden's message makes you feel good in your heart, you go with that. It's no choice is wrong. And not even those people who look into their heart and want to go with, with Trump, it's not wrong for them. It's their journey and we can't judge. Okay. Because at some point we're all going to come realize that we are all part of this wave 
And there'll be those people who are up front. And those people up front, just like any, you know, anytime you're on a wave of something, the people up front generally get battered more than the people in the back. And then everybody else sort of gets drug along eventually. So we're all going to get there, folks. We're all going to get there. Okay. So um, <clears throat> one thing I want to mention about this is that this, uh, so the path that the chariot is on connects Bina, the divine feminine, understanding, Bina means understanding, with Gabura, which is severity, and is associated with uh, the planet Mars. This is Saturn and Mars. So if, if we have to look to see if anything is happening with Saturn and Mars, because that's going to be important. Well, Mars is in Capricorn. Um, I think all of March, I think. We'll get to it. <laughs> I can't remember everything. Oh no, it goes into Aquarius because of this. All right, so mostly in 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 um, Capricorn. So that's important because we have the South Node in Capricorn, we have Jupiter in Capricorn, we have Pallas Athena, the goddess uh, that deals with government, and uh, you know, is it working for the people and social justice? We have uh, Saturn, we have Pluto. We have, did I say the South Node? So Mars is going to be going over all of these points in March. Okay, it's already gone over the South Node. That happened a couple of days ago. It's still uh, this past week. Okay, the energy is still there. It's approaching Pallas Athena. And it will then go to, I think, Jupiter, Pluto, and then Saturn. Okay, through this this month. All of that energy, all of that Capricorn energy was the energy that was most prominent in January. So things that happened in January, we will revisit them. Excuse me, but it'll be on a little bit a different level because we're further along. We have a little bit more information and perhaps we're seeing the consequences of what happened in, in January. All right. So, um, so as energy, as, as Mars moves through all of that Capricorn energy, it's going to activate all of those planets and we're going to see stuff. And because it's on the side of the South node, there's going to be a lot of stuff from the past that's coming up. Okay. That gets energized. Um, and then we have to look at, um, Saturn because Saturn is, is these are the two planets getting activated through the tree of life. Okay. And Saturn is in Capricorn, but it shifts into uh, Aquarius later in the month. Now it moves into Aquarius and it stays there for a little while, but then eventually it goes back to Capricorn to, to sort of um, tie things up. That like little flurry into Cap into into Aquarius of Saturn gives us an idea of a possible future for ourselves. And of course it's Aquarius. So it's a little bit more Aquarian. It's less about the ambition of Capricorn and more about working for the common good. Okay. But then it does go back into Capricorn because there are things that have to be still have to be resolved in Capricorn. On the 31st, I'm telling you, the universe has a great, I don't know, sense of timing, I guess. <laughs> At least I think so. Um, on the 31st, the last day, Saturn makes a conjunction to Mars at one degree of Aquarius. Why is that important? Okay. First of all, that starts a two-year synodal cycle between Saturn and um, Saturn and Mars. Okay. Two years. Saturn is seeding Mars. Saturn is structure. Saturn is ambition. Saturn is the rules. Okay. Now Mars comes along and activates Saturn and then moves past Saturn and, and takes that energy, whatever that seed was, it, it takes that energy and it moves it forward. And in a two year period, it comes around again. So it has an opportunity to express itself. Mars is expression through action. And so it is expressed, it will express itself through action, but the action is not in Capricorn, right? Which would be 
government and those in charge and those in power and the rules and the regulations. No, it's an Aquarius, which is about working for the common good, break it to a certain extent, revolution and breaking the rules that no longer serve, not all the rules, but the rules that no longer serve. And so the energy of Mars is in a sort of a revolutionary cycle. One other thing about this one degree of Aquarius is that at the end of the year, uh, December 21st here in the States, uh, December 22nd down under, uh, we have a conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter. That occurs every 20 years. The last time it happened, it happened in 2000, and it was in the sign of Taurus. Okay, our values, what's important to us. And it is considered a, um, it's considered, and, and Taurus is also money. It's considered a, a uh, financial cycle. It's considered a generational cycle because it's a 20 year cycle. Saturn and Jupiter are what we call social planets. Jupiter is the expansion through exploration and the exploration of knowledge, the exploration of experience. And Saturn is the boundary. Saturn is as far as you can go. And so as we have this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction every 20 years, okay, we have sort of a new expansion. Now I'm going to talk about the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction a little later in the year, um, because there's a lot of significant facts about that that need to be uh, talked about. Um, but it is the conjunction occurs at one degree of Aquarius. So the end of March, it has a very significant, has a very significant energy, a, a, a planting of some sort of seed that is going to manifest itself, not just now, but over the next 20 years. So it's an important time. All right. So, um, okay. Oh yes. And the other thing about this path, uh, between, uh, Bina and Gabura between the planet Saturn and the planet Mars is this combination is discipline and energy. And so it requires disciplined energy. So in your life, okay. Where do you not have discipline and where do you need it? And it's there where you need to put your energy. So if you're not particularly organized, like myself, that's where the energy has to go. If you're having health issues, that's where the energy has to go. If you're having relationship issues, that's where the energy has to go. It has to be disciplined and it has to be with the right intention, with the right intention, because we are creating our future right now right now. And if you want your future to look different, you're going to have to make different choices and go in different dire a different direction than you are now. And that's just, that's the story. So I'm going to just read with this, uh, this little thing that I wrote here. And I got this from, um, this book right here. Um, uh, I actually love her interpretation of the cards. Um, and I do use her tarot every now and again. This is Tarot of the Spirit by P Pamela Eakins, PhD. This, if you're interested in um, Kabbalah and the study of the tarot, this is a fabulous, fabulous book. Just fabulous. I have like all kinds of yellow in it, right? So this is a great book. So this is what she says about the, um, the chariot card. She says, take responsibility for your present condition. It is time to move beyond the past. <laughs> uh, seek deep meaning within yourself. Standards of action must emerge. Standards of action. And so you have to be responsible. And if you're responsible, things will work out good for you. If you're irresponsible, not so much. Not so much. Okay, so that's the uh, numerology Kabbalah part of this, this talk. The next thing I'm going to talk about is um, the astrological stuff that's going to be happening. Okay, I'll be right back.